Today, I rebuild the Green Bay Packers. And after an electric showing from Jordan Love in his first season as a starter, I'm here to take this team to another level. Also, please subscribe, because we're trying to hit 50,000, and I cannot do that without you. And enjoy. Go Pack Go, and they'll go as far as Jordan Love will take them. Because after sitting for three full seasons behind Aaron Rodgers in his first year as the QB1, he exploded onto the scene 4,159 yards, 32 touchdowns to 11 interceptions. He was honestly really good and came up in so many big moments for them, most notably, of course, away against the Cowboys in the wildcard round where they came away with the W. I think it's pretty safe to say the Packers got their franchise guy. And his numbers back up everything, but so does the film, so does watching. Some of the throws he makes were spectacular. I mean, when I seen him throw that ball. When I seen him throw that ball, I was like, oh my God. And him still being just 24 years old, star development, although you could honestly argue he could be superstar, but I'm just going to leave it as is. We're most definitely going to bring a Lombardi back to Lambeau, and he's going to be the man under helm. Running backs, you got A.A. Ron, who was hurt for the majority of this season, but come playoff time, he was incredible, no doubt. And RB2 is, of course, the Farming Goat Simulator. Now, the wide receiver room is really young and interesting. I think the one here when healthy is, of course, Christian Watson, who last year had an awesome stretch of games where he was scoring multiple touchdowns, it feels like, every freaking week. But this season, unfortunately, he was hurt for the majority of it. He will be healthy all throughout this video, so hopefully we can develop him into a true standout number one. Wide receiver two is Romeo Dobbs, the sophomore man out of Nevada who enjoyed a pretty good campaign, if I say so myself, but especially that freaking playoff game against the Cowboys where he was just open at will, borderline unguardable, unstoppable performance by him. Dontavion Wicks, the rookie out of Virginia, had some pretty big games to develop some good chemistry with Jordan Love but personally I think their most standout weapon this season was the rookie Jaden Reed he was their leading receiver this season with 64 receptions just a smidge under 800 yards eight touchdowns too but they utilized him in so many other ways too including the run game with 119 yards and even two tutties and there's no doubt Jaden Reed is a dangerous weapon so I'm really excited to see how he develops with us today but as you can see this receiver core is extremely young Christian Watson is still just 24 Jaden Reed's 23 Bo Melton I believe is just 24 Romeo Dobbs is 23 years old Dontavian Wicks is still just 22 and I believe even Samari Torres under 25 he literally is 25 years old so if all these dudes can just develop at a good pace alongside Jordan Love it could be a dangerous dangerous offense we have for this entire video and I haven't even mentioned their tight ends two rookies in Luke Musgrave and Tucker Craft who are both quite solid this season I'm surprised Musgrave doesn't have start of element but shout out to the Beavers and their offensive line despite not having Bakhtiari once again this season I think actually performed well over expectations Zach Tom is good we know how great Ellen Jenkins is but David Bakhtiari is becoming quite a problem here in the past three seasons he's only played more than one game once and his contract is not too friendly either obviously we know how great of a left tackle he is when healthy but that's just a big problem for them in real life but obviously he will be healthy for us today so go crazy back to Yari. now defensively they have a pretty solid unit overall it's nothing too crazy but they got some good players their defensive line is quite solid Kenny Clark we know how great he is Devontae Wyatt had a pretty quiet rookie season but in year two stepped it up a notch and Slayton Jr we probably got to upgrade there outside linebacker because you got Preston Smith, who has been consistently quite good for them for some time now, but he is on the wrong side of 30, so the Packers have been looking for replacements in Kingsley and Nekbari, who they drafted a few years ago, Lucas Van Ness. In the first round this year, hopefully they can step up when we uh, kind of phase Preston Smith out, but of course the main man is Rashawn Gary, who is a monster. Honestly, an 85 feels quite underrated. I feel like he should be like at least an 87, maybe an 88. He was once again their sack leader. Like, Rashawn Gary's a dog. But of course, at corner, you got arguably the best player on this team. The pack is back. And I'm sure they'll bring that energy right to Texas. I'm just here to tell you, pack is back. <laughs> you heard it from a fan right here. Pack is back. And I love Jair Alexander. Honestly, one of my favorite players in the league because not only is he a shutdown corner, but he'll let you know about it too, right? If you force him in completion, you're going to hear about it. He's going to gritty on you. He's going to do all sorts of antics. Now, is he the brightest in terms of common sense? Maybe not, but we can all agree he's a damn good football player. <laughs> they like, you mean defer? I'm like, yeah, I guess. Okay. The CB2 here is Eric Stokes, who I honestly thought was a standout in his rookie year. I thought he was honestly pretty good, but the two seasons following that, he's battled some tough injuries, only played about three games this year, so hopefully today we see him back at his best. And then you got the rookie Carrington Valentine, who I think was pretty solid based off expectations, and of course Keyshawn Nixon, who made some big plays not only on defense, but special teams too. Free safety Rudy Ford had a pretty good year, and Darnell Savage kind of took a back seat a little bit, but still contributed here and there. Shout out to Simone Biles' husband. But on the real, Jonathan Owens was pretty solid this year, except for this. Williams, let's see what happens here.
And that linebacker, man, Devondre Campbell was so elite for his first season in Green Bay. Unfortunately, battled some injuries this season, but Quay Walker had a pretty decent campaign when he's not punching people on the sidelines. Isaiah McDuffie's cool too, I guess. But you want to know this team's biggest problem? <laughs> their kicker because i mean every time andrews carlson goes on the field to kick the ball green bay fans are crossing their fingers when he goes out there i just pray and for field goals he went 27 for 33 81 percent there but extra points 34 for 39 for 87 percent i don't even know i got drafted because his college sets are extremely underwhelming was he just an industry plant or something i don't know you tell me and i didn't really intend for this to be an andrews carlson hate rant but i mean <laughs> he belongs somewhere else welcome to the xfl but yeah, as you can see, this team is pretty good and it's still really young, so everybody should grow and develop as the years go on together. We already have our franchise QB, no doubt, in Jordan Love. So the foundation overall is already there. We just really got to hit on some draft picks, make some smart moves, and that Lombardi is coming back home in no time. As the Chiefs are victorious once again against the Niners here, 35-24, Super Bowl MVP is you know who. Pat Mahomes. And we already got a fifth year for Eric Stokes. I feel like he was drafted yesterday. It'll be accepted though, of course. Go farm somewhere else, man. Now, darn no, Savage actually does have interest. Plus, he isn't really asking for a lot. I'm even gonna knock it down a little bit. Will he still accept? He is back. You know, I don't hate that deal. John Runyon and Bo Melton, I'm probably gonna let go. But with just a little over 25 mil left, we have Jonathan Owens, Keyshawn Nixon, and Rudy Ford here. And I think after re-signing Darno Savage, I'm gonna let Rudy Ford go. Keyshawn Nixon, probably not too interested either. But Jonathan Owens really doesn't want that much anyway, so I'll just give him a two-year deal. Oh my god, Kenyon Drake is a 64 overall now. I mean, the lifespan for NFL running backs is truly so minimal bro and before we go to free agency i kind of just want to see what the mock draft has us taken they have us going tyler newbin safety in minnesota i'm, I'm not gonna do that <laughs> i'll probably be eyeing kool-aid quinion mitchell probably a corner maybe even jpj by the way how funny is this so madden updated it to have start today right to have all the real stats realistic records but the draft order is still messed up the cardinals are at two the commanders are at four i believe the falcons are eight the bears are nine and then the jets are 10 so these are just all mismatched i believe the seahawks are number 16 the jags are 17 and the Bengals are 18 i mean it's mad and what did we expect by the way did some more updating on this draft class as a whole if you guys do want to download it on xbox next gen i'll put it on the screen right here we got about 24 mil here trent brown stefan gilmore michael pittman legeria sneed dj reader patrick queen wouldn't be too bad some big players here my goat robert hunt had to have reported as eligible and then look at that it's so odd in my last read, but I did start today as well. And Geno Stone went up to superstar, but here he only goes up to star. And we are going to use a little bit of money here. Cam Carl would be an awesome addition at strong safety. Kareem Hum just as a backup. And then John Runyon to bring him back. Real question is, can we get them all? We do. We go three for freaking three. Now for the draft, as I alluded to earlier, I would love a DB. Ideally Cooper DeGene, but I'm not sure if he falls to me. But man, he would be a jack of all trades type guy. I mean, outside, inside, even safety. So we'll focus him first. However, I'm definitely interested in something on the D-line as well. Maybe by Aaron Murphy or Johnny Newton. I'm going to put one on Johnny. Shout out Lamar. <laughs> And then low-key, if there's any way I can get my guy JPJ, I will. And hold up, we low-key have so many picks. We have one first rounder our pick, and then we have two seconds, one at number eight, and then three thirds. I cannot really recall what those are. This one's going to be the Jets. That was for Aaron Rodgers. If he actually played, I believe that would have been a first round pick too, so that is kind of pain, but obviously it probably wouldn't have been that high. And then Buffalo for, I believe, Rashul Douglas, right? Okay, we have a plethora of picks. But at pick number one is, of course, our fierce rivals, the Chicago Bears. They are going to go with... Caleb Williams at number one. And Caleb, I got one question for you. Who is Jordan Love to you? My dad. Whether it's Justin Fields, Caleb Williams, Mitch Trubisky, it don't matter. It's going to be two free wins for us here today. Oh, Kool-Aid went right before us. But is every corner I wanted gone? DeGene, Kool-Aid is gone. Quinion Mitchell is still here, though. So he will definitely be an option. Johnny Newton is also here. Round one talent, too. If we wanted to go tackle, we still got some good ones in Jordan Morgan and Patrick Paul. But the one I'm most intrigued in is most definitely Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. I feel like he just has the most upside out of those guys. He's a freak athlete if we need a long-term replacement for, of course, David Bakhtiari. And although I am very tempted to go Quinion Mitchell, I think I'm going to end up going Jerzon Newton. The defensive tackle out of Illinois, of course, who's arguably defensive tackle number one in this class alongside Byron Murphy, I would say. He is a little undersized at 6'2", 300, but that shouldn't be a big problem as he can win with his skill and his technique overall. And just the overall thought of him, Kenny Clark, Devontae Wyatt on our defensive line for 
hopefully about this entire video is um a deadly thought and an exciting one to say the least johnny newton you are going to be our first round pick at 25 ends up being hit a development too and our defense is a bit getting a big upgrade with him on the d-line now with the jets pick in the second round i'm very tempted to see who falls jpj when i saw that damn that's kind of who i wanted <laughs> My God, but all of these receivers are still here. Keon Coleman, Leggett, Troy Franklin, Tez, McConkey, Adonai Mitchell. But at pick eight, I'm going to go with TJ Tampa here, the corner out of Iowa. A guy I think is comfortably going to be a top 50 pick in this draft. I've seen him as high as um the first round in some mocks too. We definitely need corner depth after losing out on Keyshawn Nixon too. Eric Stokes is not a fifth year. We just need more depth there as um as a whole. So TJ Tampa, I think we can't go wrong here in round number two. He ends up only being normal development, but hopefully we can develop him. He's going to be corner three um behind Stokes and Jair anyway, so hopefully he can come up slowly but surely. With our pick though, I'm going to go with Kingsley Suamataia here, the left tackle out of BYU, of course, just because of the sheer unknown with David Bakhtiari with his age, his injury history, right? If he does do well for us in these next few years and we give him a new deal, if worse comes to worse, we can slide Kingsley inside to guard, so I think this is going to be a good pick nonetheless. He ends up only being normal too, but he should serve as a good player for us. In round three now, I'm not too sure what to do. These receivers are still here. I did not Mitchell, Leggett, Jalen Polk, Xavier Worthy, even Roman and Johnny Wilson down here too. We just don't really need receivers though. We already have so many young ones. With pick 25 though, I'm going to opt to go for the center from Georgia, Cedric Van Prawn here. We could use an upgrade at center for now and the future too, so he should be a good addition to the O-line. Unfortunately, only normal too, but hopefully he makes us better. And then with the Bills third round pick, I'm going to trade out of it and get a 2025 third from the Colts. And then in round four now, I'm going to go with Darius Robinson, an edge out of Mizzou who I haven't really updated yet, but he's been flying as of late so i just want to show him some love probably comfortably going to go in the first two rounds so i definitely got to update him but i'm just going to take him now and uh hopefully he can develop like a beast as johnny newton ends up being a 76 overall there 73 for tj tampa kings of suamataia 72 svp 70 overall 67 for darius robinson not too bad and by the way of course i have updated this class so i do know a few of the ratings some of the dev traits as well but i'm just gonna do in my rebuilds what i think the packers will do or just similarly to it i'm not gonna go with the op players and the op dev traits every time because that would just be a little boring right so so some of you might say why would you go with all these normal players when you know the other players are better or have better dev traits i'm just gonna go with what i think in the ballpark the packers will do in real life because i'm not trying to cheese it in any way you know slash what i've done in previous reboots too so if i took somebody in a past reboot i'm likely not gonna take them again unless it makes sense now looking towards the future we are gonna get off some pretty hefty contracts this year in back to yari kenny clark aaron jones but we're of course gonna have to pay jordan love and he's not gonna ask for a small amount so gotta be careful with the money this year i would love to re-sign Aaron Jones and Kenny Clark but we'll see as this is how the squad is looking officially in year number one fresh off a divisional round exit to the Niners of course Jordan Love is looking to improve and hopefully become an MVP candidate but to be honest other than the addition of Kareem Hunt the offense pretty much remains the same I'm actually gonna make Jaden Reed our wide receiver number two though just because he does have star development but to be honest with you I think this offense is good enough right as long as you got Jordan Love under center it can function to a high level defensively though is where we use some of our draft capital in and Johnny Newton and TJ Tampa flush some big money as well with the signing of cam curl and something else i think i'm gonna do is move lucas van ness to the other side of rashawn gary and also start him just for him to hopefully develop quicker and you know what we'll make quay walker our number one too the real question is can we get jordan love up to his deserved superstar you know the answer to that question how about christian watson though ha 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 if we could get TJ Tampa up to star, that would be big time. Gold first try, the Rook just showed out. First try, 30 second try though, it doesn't matter. And for our very first game under tenure here, let's go ahead and hop in and see how we do against the Minnesota Vikings. But I actually did see Kirk Cousins in free agency, so I wonder who their QB is. They drafted Penix in the second round. And of course, they still have Justin Jefferson, but guess what? We got Christian Watson. You know, they got KD, but we got Jaden McDaniels. As we will also be at Lambeau Field, so we got that on our side too. Come on, boys. Let's start off the season right after a huge um over expectations uh, in last year with Jordan Love in his first year starting. We're hoping to even build upon that, maybe get even further, maybe even make a run for the Lombardi itself. As the first half is... I'm to an end here. We're up 14-13. Second half on its way. We do start with ball. Do not get any points. There is the Vikings drive down. Take a two-point lead. Can our offense and Jordan Love get anything going here in the fourth quarter? Down two points. We hand it off to Aaron Jones on the very first play of it. And he gets us an easy conversion and more. He's having a crazy game. Keep feeding A.A. Ron. First and 10. We hand it off again here and he gets stuffed this time. But we now have a third and seven out of the gun. Jordan Love is going to drop back to pass the ball. Slings it out on the left side. 
and it's good defense by 2-1. As we get to punt the ball here in the fourth quarter, the Vikings hit it on the 20, but they get a 10-yard penalty from Christian Darisol, but get the second and 16 conversion. Huh? Oh. What, what did I... Um, I don't know what's crazier, the fact that A.J. Dillon went to the Vikings, which is, um, yeah, F you too, A.J., or the fact that he just ran for 63 yards for a touchdown. You, you're telling me we couldn't catch that guy? I mean, to be fair, maybe we did catch him, but his big ass is impossible to tackle. I don't know. Did we just go three now? We went for it on fourth and three. Aaron Jones gets us the conversion. Romeo Dobbs for 27 yards. If we can score quick here, we are definitely not out of this game. The Vikings are only up by nine points. We still have three timeouts. The two-minute warning is still left. Jordan Love, show me what you can do when we need you most. It's gonna be the rookie not the rookie anymore second year man luke musgrave as we are now running a hurry up second and five we run a play action for aaron jones jordan love screws up to the left side does whatever that is and completes it for a touchdown jordan love i mean <laughs> i've ran out of i've ran out of words to describe the man however it does all come down to if anders carlson can make the extra point and he does thankfully <laughs> but can we now rely on our defense to get just one stop here and put the ball back in jordan love's hands as michael Penix? He's wearing number 22. I mean, <laughs> Christ, man. Second and four, though, after the TJ Hawkinson reception. They'd fake it to AJ Dillon. Penix, he's also right handed. I. Interception. Is that TJ Tampa? Is that TJ Tampa in his first game, rookie on rookie crime? Nope, it was Cam Curl, the big offseason acquisition, though. What I was also saying, though, is that Panic, I made Panix number nine, left handed, but you guys know how freaking EA are and Madden are in general. They just don't save anything. Aaron Jones, wide open for a first down. Like the fact that he's number 22 and right handed just, just makes me so mad. Like, come on, man. First and 10, Jordan Love, please just get it out. Tell you what, though. We are in field goal range. Now, is it field goal range for Andrews Carlson? Who knows? But we are in field goal range, and they're only up two here. Aaron Jones, though, on the second and 24, gets a good gain. As the Vikings opt to not use a timeout for some reason. I'm not, not going to touch the controller. Hey, waste the time. Waste the time. We ain't in no rush. We ain't in no rush. Uh, or, or snap it with 20 seconds to go just to run the... Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. That is how you start off the season, baby. Come on. Yo, why does my game look so light? Hey, I was questioning why we would run a play there. I was thinking run down the clock and then kick a field goal, but hell, I'll take seven instead. Who am I to doubt? Aaron freaking Jones. Absolutely electric first game of the season here, but let's see how Michael Penix can do in his first ever game in the NFL under the bright lights in the fourth quarter. Yeah. That's what I expected. <laughs> Wait, so now the Vikings have Penix, and the Bears, of course, drafted Caleb Williams, so two rookies in this division. This is really Jordan Love's division to lose, if you ask me. Of course, the Lions have their super team over there, so hopefully we can take them down. Now, that's the problem. It doesn't really matter who the QB is, because at the end of the day, they are passing to Justin Jefferson who is up to nine receptions, 118 yards, as we are up five points with under 45 to go here, but Penix is getting pressured. And a field goal does absolutely nothing for them with just one timeout to go. Every down counts for the Vikings. Can our defense step up here? Penix has time in the pocket. Where is our pass rush? We only rushed three to be fair. Penix. Oh no. Oh no. We need our defense to get a big stop. They're not going to opt to run the ball. We get pressure, number 90. Oh, my God. Pressure might make it come down to just about 15 seconds to go here, but they're backed up onto the eight now. Penix in the gun. Drops back. We get pressure again. He sends it out of bounds. A field goal does nothing. And that huge conversion was so close to being a touchdown as though well. he was just down. He just got out on the one there. Eight seconds to go. Penix drops back. Slings it out to nobody. I know he's getting scared. I, I know Jair is talking. <laughs> And probably the last play of the game, fourth and goal, four seconds to go. Michael Penix has a lot of room, has a lot of time, and converts it in the final seconds of the game to Jordan Addison. Heartbreak. Heartbreak in week one. I mean, he just had so much time to throw. Jetta was open too, to be fair. Ah... And not the ideal start that we wanted, of course, but uh, last year the Packers started off relatively slow as well and got super hot in the second half, so 
I'm hoping for more of that this year. And I still can't believe we let AJ Dillon score a 63 yard touchdown. <laughs> and after that heartbreak in week one to the Vikings, did the boys in green and yellow bounce back at the midseason mark? We're four and three. We're top of the division though, so I'm definitely happy about that. Yeah, if we beat the Vikings, we'd be five and two though, and that looks a lot better. Scouting national focus, although not a big position in need, there are a million outside linebackers in this class. Literally check this out. The number one guy, Jeff Swain, Spencer Dobbins, number four, number five, Calvin Brown. We got Ezekiel Yancey, Juwan Boyle here, Nathan Newton. I mean, they are everywhere. Kendrick Wilkinson. Now, is it likely we're gonna have a pick that high to get either of them? Probably not, but if they look crazy enough, I will not hesitate to trade up. For player contracts though, we do of Kenny Clark. Jordan Love is here. Aaron Jones. He does have interest though. We do have about 75 mil. David Bakhtiari, Kareem Hunt, Josh Myers. Let's get the big one out of the way first, especially before he starts developing into one of the best QBs in the league and, you know, ask for a huge sum of money. I think this amount is um kind of a steal for Jordan Love. Welcome back, my guy. But um obviously that just took a huge chunk out of our cap room here. I'm not too sure if we're going to be able to sign all three of these guys back. But the one I want the most is, of course, Aaron Jones, who went crazy in that week one game and although is 29 years now he's still a beast and he will be good for us in this rebo today for another three years but for kenny clark and david bakhtiari i think we wait to the end of the year to see what we do with them go ahead and sip into week 11 though week 8 we got the jaguars we smoke on 35 10 that's what i'm talking about the four and four saints in week 9 at lambo 28 14 here we go six and three with a breakout db eric stokes or tj tampo darnell savage up to superstar i don't hate either though all i gotta say is darnell savage can you do something for me 30 okay we're kind of rolling now i ain't even gonna lie we got a weekly award Award winner too in his Jordan Love, the new contract man, 26 for 34 for 411 and five passing touchdowns, no interceptions. You have rocked my world. But did Darno Savage do the thing? <laughs> He did. As we also have a trench, trench boost, prospect spotlight, and focus players. <laughs> a little trench boost action. Sacks challenge. The amount of sacks you allow against the 49ers will determine how much XP each offensive lineman earns. I kind of wish it was any other team but the Niners, but okay. Let's go ahead and check out this prospect spotlight, though. Strong safety Jonathan Buchanan here. Assistant GM, your legacy's on the line. Yeah, which means if he sucks, you're out of here. And you know, I'm not even going to cap with you. One of my good friends growing up and still to this day, his name is Jonathan Buchanan, so um. I, I guess I'm drafting him. <laughs> or I guess we'll look at him. He's 21 years old out of Florida State. DBU with good ratings, too. I'm definitely intrigued. And although we do have Cam Curl now, it never hurts to have more DBs. Jared Dudley as well. I mean, oh my god. That dude went to the Nets and started acting crazy, man. Never forget his beef with Ben Simmons, too. I mean, if we're looking back at that, though. <laughs> What kind of mid-off was that? <laughs> what do we even do in the draft? <laughs> Maybe I'd like to upgrade at guard. Trevor Baldwin, is that you? Guess we can look for something on the D-line too in case we don't get Kenny Clark back. Jamarcus Swinton and Sean Williams here both look really good. I'll throw it on Jamarcus. Hopefully he doesn't turn out like that, Jamarcus. But as in week 11 now, we've kind of been rolling. We do have that trench boost thing here in week 11, so I guess I'll sim it and see how we do. We lose to the Niners, 28-24. We own the Bears. The Niners kind of own us. I ain't even gonna lie. But we didn't allow a sack in that game, surprisingly. Which means we're gonna get everybody on the old line plus 10,000 XP. Honestly, I'll take a loss for that. <laughs> but we can't rack up too many losses or else we'll miss the playoffs. And we end up back here and we're gonna be playing a familiar foe in the Niners. As the Vikings swept us, man. We can't stop peeing. Wait, the Vikings? What? what? They went 12-5. and five. Hello? Now, nah, what am I looking at? That Penix is top three for passing leaders. Are you kidding me? Do you see what I see, though? Talk to me now. Okay. Third offensive. Jordan Love. Jordan Yov. Oh, God. The defense was not good. What am I seeing here? 4,400 yards. Damn near 41 touchdowns. 13 interceptions. I mean, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love. It's a freaking Spider-Man meme. And this is why we re-signed Aaron Jones. 16 touchdowns. 4.7 to carry. 1,400 yards. I mean... A plus. And uh, we mentioned Christian Watson hopefully becoming that tight end one for us. And oh my goodness, or who? The wide receiver one for us. And he more than ever did that. If that made sense. 1,500 yards though, 13 touchdowns. But Luke Musgrave was a red zone demon. 15 touchdowns, 930 yards. Both of these guys should easily get Devies. Jaden Reed, A85, four tutties for him. Tomorrow, Mio Dubs contributed a little bit too. What a season on the offense. However, the defense was kind of mid. Quay Walker, 117. Cam Curl, 107. 100 for Devondre Campbell. There's 17 TFLs for Kenny Clark, 14 for Johnny Newton, the rookie, as well as eight sacks. And Lucas Van Ness, now in a starting role, put up eight sacks, 13 TFLs too. 
actually kind of more than Rashawn Gary, or at least TFL is kind of the same overall. Rashawn Gary, I kind of want more from you, especially with how much you're getting paid, but eight and a half will do. Eight for Newton, eight for Van Ness, five for Kenny Clark, and then interceptions, eight for Jair. I mean, the pack is back, baby. <laughs> you heard it from a fan right here. And not a bad first season at all, if you ask me. And for the first playoff game of the video for us here, let's go ahead and hop in and see if we can get our revenge on Brock Purdy. And I should be able to get this video out before the Super Bowl. Let me know your guys' Super Bowl predictions in the comments below. For me, I got my Dolphins beating the Eagles 31-24. Just kidding, I ain't even mad. We're kind of mid. Uh, first quarter on its way as we are in San Francisco. They score the first touchdown of the game, but we equalize quick. 7 all here in the second quarter. Nobody scores, though. Nobody scores at all. Second half on its way. Still 7 all. Niners have the ball. Fourth quarter on its way. They get the second touchdown of the game. And it's an ugly one here. As I believe they have a third and 18, though, with 2 minutes and 20 to go. If our defense can get a stop here and just give Jordan Love one last chance i got faith i most definitely got faith brock purdy is going wherever he's going and throws it out of bounds to stop the clock for us thank you very much brock and the punt even got in with two minutes and one second to go so we got an extra timeout after this down jordan love can you do something special for me today? Just like we saw him do in week one as well against the Vikings. Unfortunately, the defense just kind of let us down there. Ooh. To be fair, catching a crossing route into Fred Warner or Dre Greenlaw is a bit terrifying, so I don't really blame you. Third and four, Jordan Love drops back, finds the ground. What the hell was that? And here we go. The wild card on the line. Fourth and four. We do still have all three timeouts, though, although they are... They would be in a um, very good field goal range, but we convert anyway. It's Jaden Reed. As we still opt to run, hurry up instead of calling a timeout. I don't hate it. Play action to Aaron Jones, I would assume. Jordan Love. Oh, we had people open there. I ain't even gonna lie. And like he was doing a stupid rollout cross buddy throw, but I've seen Jordan Love do that many times before. So in my mind, I was like, that is a completion all day. Oh, hold on to the ball, man. As we got ourselves another fourth and five with just 55 seconds to go. Jordan Love finds the wide receiver one in conversion after conversion. I mean, if we get it here, I would love for us to go for two. I ain't even gonna lie with you, Christian Watson again. As we use our second time out there, 45 seconds to go, and that one was a little rushed. As we got a third and three now, please do not give us our third, fourth down to this drive. Jordan Love finds an open man there. We gotta go though, we really do. As we now have a third and long and play by play, it's becoming more and more touchdown or bust. Luke Musgrave, though, open for the first time. We're going to have to use our timeout here. And we got to go for the end zone here pretty much no matter what. If we want to stay in this game, Jordan Love, you know who to throw it to. You know who to throw it to. You know who to throw it to. Christian freaking Watson. Oh, my God. What a throw. What a freaking grab. <laughs> Yo, nah, these two are different. Look at that throw, bro. Absolute dime onto the left hash, and Christian Watson, while getting hit, maintains footing, maintains the ball, gets us the touchdown. We're actually going for two? Hold up, what? I didn't think we'd... Okay. Please, Jordan Love. <laughs> no way. Jordan Love, Christian Watson. Nah, man. Nah, that's so sick. Why did we go for two? I love it. I love it, but they, the you, CPU never does that. Jordan Love, I love you. You too, Christian. You freaking too, bro. What? Chase Young, we know he's lost as ever in coverage. Come on. That was so far. That was so far, and with just four seconds to go, Purdy's gonna have to throw it 80 freaking yards, but he throws it um, to Debo. That was a nice grab. Nice pass too, but <laughs> a little too late. Shanahan, no. Is it gonna oh, quarter and no? I actually cannot believe we went for two and won the game that way, though. In San Fran, we finally get a W over the fr the 49ers. Feels good. Man, Aaron Jones actually didn't do too much, but neither did McCaffrey, to be fair. Obviously, it's still a decent day, but for McCaffrey standards, not really. You know what I mean? Christian Watson, though, 95 yards, one touchdown, of course, the biggest one of the game. That was that was something, though. That was special for sure. We do still get the win, though. 15-14 against the Niners. <laughs> Man, that was that was so sick. 
realistic, but who are we going to get in the divisional round? We're moving on. We don't care about them anymore. It's the Dallas Cowboys who are looking to get their revenge on us, of course. As they did finish as the number one seed going 15-2, and two, it's going to be Vikings-Panthers in the other side. Two and four matchup. Um, we got Herbert versus Burrow over here, and then Aaron Rodgers versus Buffalo. Imagine we face Rodgers in the Super Bowl, man. That would be a dream or a nightmare, depending on what how you want to look at it. <laughs> um, we're going to hop in again, though, because I just that was that was awesome what I just witnessed, bro. <laughs> and let's see. Can we play spoiler once again in Jerry's world? Talk to me, boys. We've done it before. Let's do it again. The Cowboys drive down quick, but we equalized there in the first quarter. Their offense is on fire, though. 14-7, 21-7 now. 10, um, 17, 21 at the end of the first half there. 24-21. We're taking the lead. Jerry's world is crumbling under the pressure. 28-24. They get a field goal there. And we just, no, we punted. We're just under two minutes and 30 left to go. We are down a touchdown here. All three timeouts are left. We need a stop on this very possession. As they motion out, my boy Hunter Lepke pass it on to Tony Pollard. He's got room and more. Still not out of it for sure, though. Three timeouts to go. We just need them to not get a first down because that would end this game. Tony Pollard. Tony Paul heard out of all people, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what am I watching? What are we doing? I'm hopping in here. We are sending the absolute blitz. We are sending the house. Third and one. We need this stop more than ever. <laughs> Cut to commercial or something. At night, I remember when you and I Okay, um, I apologize. It's harder than it looks. <laughs> As we're going to end up going out to the Cowboys here in the divisional round again, back-to-back -back years at this place. I think we just got to... We gotta go maybe one or two more years of this team developing, and I truly think we could go over the edge and make the Super Bowl. Jordan Love was excellent, though. Three tutties, no interceptions, 296 yards. Dak was just a little bit more efficient, though, in the uh, in the red zone. And for whatever reason, Pollard was playing like he's an RB2 again. And we got no sacks that game. I mean, yeah, if you give Dak time, he's gonna make you pay. The lesson learned from all this, though, is that we gotta win this division. Because we just went through the Niners and had the Cowboys in the second round. If we were the Vikings, or if we won the division, we'd be playing the Panthers right now. We'd be probably into the conference championship and having, you know, an easier ride there. But, uh, yeah, we got a lot of years left to go. I'm, I'm, it's definitely trending upwards. As we will be getting a Buffalo-Dallas Super Bowl. Is there a chance Jordan Loves wins MVP here? It goes to Joe Burrow, Lamar, number three. Four is, or three is Dak. Jordan Love, number seven, feels so disrespectful. As Panix wins offensive rookie of the year over the likes of a Drake May who went to the Cardinals? Caleb Williams as well. <laughs> JJ McCarthy and Keon Coleman for the Giants, so that's pretty cool. How did Adunze fall to the Eagles? And the Vikings got Liatu Latu in the first round as he wins defensive rookie of the year. Okay, well, the Vikings are um building something special over there. The Bears even got Byron Murphy. We, of course, got Johnny Newton. Oh my god, this division is kind of scary. Jordan Love, number four for best QB. What are we smoking? Nah, Christian Watson, number three for best receiver? Hey, but you know who wins best DB, of course. Most definitely a great season, though. We would love, love to go a little bit further, but we should have some amazing development traits over here as we get a Jordan Love upgrade to superstar, an Aaron Jones upgrade to superstar X Factor, a Christian Watson upgrade to superstar development, and I see you over there too, Luke Musgrave up to star. I couldn't ask for much more on the O. Oh, defensively, Cam Curl goes up to superstar for Sean Gary up to X Factor. And Lucas Van Ness went up to superstar as well. Are you kidding me? We just got absolutely blessed with development traits. I didn't even got we got we got like six, seven of them things. As Johnny Newton ends up only being a uh, star development, sadly, but man, all the Debbies we just got, I am happy. A a Anders Carlson get one. <laughs> And I mean, hey, I guess you could say we lost to the eventual Super Bowl winners. 35-12, they beat Buffalo. Dak Prescott is your Super Bowl MVP. What a year, what a season for sure, but we got to make sure we win this division. And now for contracts and uh, Quay Walker and Devontae White both have fifth-year options. I think I'm going to wait on that. Man, Kenny Clark and Bakhtiari would be just such big losses, especially Kenny Clark as he's still just 29 years old. I mean, he's definitely got a few years left at the top level. He just has... No interest at all. And I mean, we don't really have money to like splash out to, man. This is a tough spot. I ain't gonna cap. Man, I mean, we just have some big contracts. Obviously, just paid Jordan Love, but for good reason. Jair is getting paid for good reason. Rashawn Gary, you could say the same thing. Ellen Jenkins, same thing. Preston Smith. 
And sadly, I do think we're going to have to let Bakhtiari walk. I mean, we do already have his replacements in either Rashid Walker or Kingsley Sua Mataia. But Kenny Clark would be a huge loss on this defense. I can't even lie. But at the same time, I kind of want to go to free agency and see what um players are available over there. Man, I don't know. I'm just going to give him the deal he's asking for. If he accepts, he accepts. If he doesn't, he doesn't. And I'm just going to end up cutting Preston Smith here. He has definitely been a great player for the Packers, but it's it's your time is out. My, my time is now. <laughs> All right, let's just see what free agency is working with. 40 mil here, Zach Martin, who has literally like full interest. So that would be quite nice. Tua is here. Don't need Tua. Demarcus Lawrence, David Bakhtiari, of course. Cooper, Teller, Batonio, Kenny Clark, Deion Dawkins, Scherf, Havenstein. Huge players. Let me see. Would I be able to get Bakhtiari back on like a cheaper deal? We're comfortably still number one, so I'll try it. Mm, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm actually going to withdraw. Zach Martin's asking for less and is better. So I'm just going to go for him and he has more interest. Whoa, 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 Dalton, calm down. <laughs> I'm honestly so hurt that Kenny Clark just doesn't want to join us back. Like, what's his problem, man? Some big names for sure, but I'm going to play it a little safe. Just go in for these two players. I just kind of want to remain flexible. I think the main way we're going to improve this team is really hitting with our draft picks. Andy, come on. Did we get Zach Martin? Okay, we did get Zach Martin, though. I mean, that was the best player there. We could explore with some trades, too. There was definitely one trade I had in mind, and it was to bring back a certain somebody. Is there any world we get? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 44 mil cap it. I mean, oh, my God. Ah, I should have tried before getting Zach Martin. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we freaking got him. Tua went to the Titans. <laughs> if you can't beat him, join him. I guess I'll sign Grover Stewart on a one year, because why not? Now, what I am excited for is this draft. What can we cook up? Okay, Trevor Baldwin, who we did earlier, looks like a beast. But uh, Jamarcus Swinton looks like Jamarcus Russell. I'm going to put one on Ahmed Stanley, defensive tackle out of Bama. Hugh Terry might be a little gem here, round three to four projection. As we also need a backup running back now, Dexter Neal might be our guy. Or Adonis Elliott. He has a cooler name. <laughs> Hugh Terry looks like a monster. Now, he is only 5'11", but so is Jair. So who really cares? Ratings, great acceleration there, a change of direction, great speed, great strength. I mean, he looks solid. I mean, as a round 3 to 4 projection, I'm not, I ain't complaining. And both Dexter Neo and Adonis Elliott honestly look pretty good. So if I can get either one of them, I'll be happy. Sadly, none of those key ratings were an A, but he's still just 21 years old. Will he be our ideal Kenny Clark replacement that's the question I think we're gonna stick and pick here at 27 and it's either of these three defensive tackles they all look fairly decent nothing crazy we saw Ahmed Stanley already Johnny Wilson's a powerhouse out of Clemson maybe a similar mold to Dexter Lawrence sexy Dexy if he comes anywhere close to him we'd be cooking for sure elite acceleration and strength is pretty cool to see though Sergio Wooten's out of Louisville 22 years old 6'5 run stopper here his ratings are all around just decent there he might have the lowest ceiling but the highest Highest floor. Johnny Wilson, on the other hand, might have the highest ceiling there, but his skills off the bat aren't anything too crazy. See finesse moves, see power moves. We don't even know his block shed for sure. But I'm gonna take the gamble, and hopefully he can be um, similar to a Christian Wilkins, to a Dexter Lawrence. I would love that. Johnny Wilson ends up being hidden development. That is all I could ask for. He's going to slot in our D-line immediately. And hopefully some of those players I loved are still here in round two. There goes our boy Jonathan Buchanan. Sadly, it looks like the left guard that I had scouted is gone, and he is. But at this pick, I think I just take um, Hugh Terry and just play it safe, maybe? As we have 12 and 27 in the third round, the 12th being the uh, Colts pick, I believe, when we traded out last year. I'm just going to take Hugh Terry here. He looks way too good not to. We could use another corner in our CB room. You, Terry, welcome to the team. Only normal, sadly, but hopefully he's like a 75, 76 overall. But damn it, that normal hurts. Pick 12 here in round three. I see left guard Jameel Weeks out of Notre Dame. And when you see an offensive lineman out of Notre Dame, you take him. And that's why. <laughs> and now at pick 27, this is where I'm hoping I can go with one of the RBs who should still be there. Donis Elliott is here, but the other guy's actually gone. But I guess that makes our decision a little bit easier as Adonis Elliott is going to slot in our BR backup running back to Aaron Jones right away. And I believe, nope, we got that freaking normal corner. I was going to say that's four, four hiddens, but another hidden here. Out of Boston College, too. Is that literally... Why do I feel like AJ Dillon went to Boston College? I don't know. If he did, I'll leave it in. If I didn't, I'll go F myself. <laughs> Round four, I'm going to go outside linebacker Craig Byrne. He does have F block shed, but it also is round four. He looks like the best player here. And it's today the day I finally get a hidden development fullback. Who knows? If you've gotten one, leave it down in the comments below. I have not been lucky enough to. Dak Phillips, 
keeps the streak rolling for me. But hey, I said we need to do most of our damage in the draft, and I think we had a pretty solid one as Johnny Wilson ends up being a 76. Hugh Terry, 77 though. Awesome. Normal dev, don't matter. 74 for Jameel Weeks. That's actually really good. As well as Adonis Elliott Burton was a, <laughs> a reach. The fullback was actually 74, though, not too shabby. Let's check out how this class was, though. Jeff Swain, good God. I didn't check him out because obviously he was the number one guy, but man, he's he a player. 73 overall to the Patriots at number one and is an X Factor. Well, okay, then Marlon Hodges, 82, 80 overall QB to the Falcons. Eddie Brandt there, Daryl McDonald. Some good quarterbacks in this class. A ton of receivers Um, as Tarrant. Nope, that's not our guy. Where is our guy? <laughs> Ooh, Dexter Neal is a 77. Goals round three, pick 18, but only normal. I think I will take the uh, rating differential for the hidden dev. And I'm also curious about those um those other defensive tackles I was looking at. Wooten and Stanley, who um end up being 75 overall, both of them. I think our guy's a 76, right? Stanley's only normal. I think he also went to the Patriots, so they had themselves a draft. Sergio Wooten went to the Commanders also normal we went with a guy with a higher ceiling and not only did he have a higher floor too but he comes with a hidden freaking dev and also last but not least i kind of want to check out the prospect spotlight who's a 77 only normal but a 77 is freaking kind of nice but hey all in all though i would give us an a on that draft i think we did really really good tim candidate the cpu got me because of course they did let's go ahead and review johnny wilson the big dt go ahead and generate best lineup and see our oh it was a qb they got okay we'll take it johnny wilson though the big defensive tackle who we just revealed we're looking at you Start development. Here now in year number two, as this offense exploded last season, and we got the dev traits for that offensive line. We did lose back to Yari, but I moved Owen Jenkins back to center, which I believe he's played there before. Correct me if I'm wrong, Packers fans, but that enables us to start the rookie Jamil Weeks, of course. As defensively, we did move Johnny Newton out to left end. I'm actually going to play Johnny Wilson just because we drafted him, and Grover Stewart's only here on a one year deal. So for the long term development of this team, I want him to play. Hugh Terry also slots in right away at a 77 overall, and I'm hoping this offense can just keep doing what it did last season the defense hopefully can step up a little more though i believe finished 20th in yards allowed good start jordan love can i see red oh. a quarterback going up to x factor in training camp would hit like crack Jaden reed just beasted and feasted and it didn't matter db battle though let's do the rook hugh terry you can't really see it sometimes but some players they just have that it factor about him hugh terry was feeling as smooth as ever though can he go up a dev trade nope Let's do one more for the big man, though. Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson. Him. Me. Unlucky as... F <laughs> oh, you boys are 5-2. and two. And with 80 mil in the bank, we got some big players to resign. Christian Watson has no interest. For whatever reason, Quay Walker, Eric Stokes, Darnell Savage, Zach Martin, Romeo Dobbs, Zach Tom, Rashid Walker. A lot of freaking players. Devontae Wyatt. Christian, what is the problem? Scheme fit and no mentors at the position. Because of course. Look, buddy, at this point, you're the mentor. You know what I mean? You're 26 now. What else do you want? Oh, my. You want more money. Quay Walker, pretty hefty deal here. I'm not going to lie, but he has developed into an 83. I think he can even get better. So he's going to stay. Eric Stokes, I do like, but we do have Hugh Terry as well as TJ Tampa. So re-signing him is not really a high priority. Darno Savage, kind of same thing. Zach Martin will wait on. I think everything else will wait on. Mm, maybe not Zach Tom, who's an 81 overall now. Doesn't want the biggest of deals and has green interest. So he re Yeah. I wanted to say re-stay and rejoin, and I said whatever that was. <laughs> Rashid Walker, I might just let walk, and we'll just start Kingsley Suomati Ia, who I have ace his name now, which is why I keep saying. <laughs> but we're looking good at midseason five and two. The second place lines are three and four, as well as the Vikings there, as we, of course, lose to the Giants in week eight. Annoyingly, who have I think JJ... M NFC East, don't do a sweep on me. Okay, thank you. Bought lot of prospects. Gonna be another safety this time, Steven Davis. And we're... Ooh. Hello. Remember last year, um, the uh, prospect spotlight guy was actually quite good at a uh, 77 overall, I believe. What was his name? <laughs> oh, he's literally right here. Stephen Davis. He looks good. Out of Virginia, 22 years old. And with us not looking to re-sign Darnold Savage, this guy could be the man to replace him. Well, okay, then why not? Um, but yeah, who were you again? Eric Cabrera. Hello, Clemson. 6'2", 270, speed rusher. Top five freaking talent. That would be kind of nice. As I did put our uh, main guy on defensive end. Ooh, nope, he's only around one two. 
Any gems over here? Two to three, round one to two guy, not too bad. James Hendricks, corner out of NDSU with Eric Stokes likely to leave. He could be the next man up. And you know, we may even have some receivers leave this year. So let's go ahead and put it on Michael Rice, brother of Rashi. Now we did leave off at six and four, but we were sitting quite pretty at top of the um of the north. Thank God. I thought we missed out on a sec, but this division was terrible this year. We finished 11 and six. What am I looking at? Okay, Jordan Love, top three this year for passing leaders, but Christian Watson... I mean, I, I gotta give him whatever deal he freaking wants. <laughs> He's cooking. As this year, we were number five for offensive yards. Defense, did it step up? It did. Number nine in a 3-4, you know. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Is that Aaron Rodgers or what? Jordan Love, 4,574 yards, 35 touchdowns to five interceptions. Spectacular. Damn near can I even say MVP? Ooh, Aaron Jones, a little bit of regression though. 11 touchdowns, way less than last year. Four carry, way less. And 1,100 yards, way less. Is his rating way less too? Nope, he's still an 87 though. So I'm not really panicking about him yet, <laughs> especially when we have Christian Watson on this team. What is he doing right now? 1,700 yards, averaged 100 yards a game. 12 touchdowns to add on to that. Jaden Reed was awesome, 969 yards. Four tutties, Romeo Dobbs, nine touchdowns. Musgrave, I'm not sure what last season was, but he had 15 touchdowns, I believe. Only five this year, but 700 yards. How'd the old line look post David Bakhtiari, Rashid Walker? 10 sacks, the most given up. Yeah, not looking good. Quay Walker, 109. Devonder Campbell, 108 for tackles. Made Johnny freaking Newton, though. Moved out to left end and dropped himself 25 tackle for losses. Lucas Van Ness got himself in the 20s too. Johnny Wilson, the rookie, 15, 11 for Gary, 10 for Devondre Campbell. Sack numbers, 8 for Johnny Newton, Rashawn Gary. Lucas Van Ness with 6, 5 for Johnny Wilson, the rookie, not bad at all. But we, I kind of want more. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of want more in terms of pressure, in terms of sacks, interceptions, three for Campbell and Jair, two for Cam Curl. As the wild card round this year, we got the New York Giants, who I believe beat us in week eight, right? They only go nine and eight. We also were in Lambeau. I think I feel pretty confident about this game in the wild card round, and we beat them 31 17. Next up is the, uh, uh I almost said 76ers. <laughs> Oh, it's the Eagles. Shout out to Devondre Campbell. As the Eagles are, of course, notorious on this channel for giving me a lot of problems, especially when we do a wheel. Can the Packers and Jordan Love beat him today, though? 27-21. We got the Cowboys again. Do we hop in? Let's check this out first. Jordan Love and Johnny Newton, player of the weeks. And yeah, we're hopping in. Let's see if we can get our revenge this time. We're 1-1 one one in the last two seasons with the Cowboys. This time heading to Jerry's World once again for the third sec consecutive season. As we are here in the NFC Conference Championship for the first time, can Jordan Love and the boys take us to the Super Bowl 7 all here in the middle of the second quarter? Looks like it's going to end that way too. And it does second half on its way. We get the lead, miss the extra point because Anders Carlson is still on our freaking team. Fourth quarter on its way though. We got a very close game. The Cowboys just scored in quick succession. It should be 21-24 though. This is giving me PTSD of the Packers versus Niners this year when Anders Carlson missed that kick. It does it. Oh, he got out of bounds. Come on, Aaron. That was an absolute peach by Jordan Love. Time in the pocket. Money. First down. Under 420 to go. Jordan Love with a quick one out here to Jaden Reed. He holds on. Makes a great grab. Second and two now inside Cowboys territory. Jordan Love drops back quickly. Throws a quick slant to Christian Watson. Breaks his tackle. And gets us another first down. Second and five. Jordan Love out of the gun. Going to be passing once again. He rolls out left. That's whatever that is. I will take that any day rather than taking the sack, though. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate a run here on a third and five. It's definitely four down territory. Love stop scrambling out to the freaking left side, man. They got a man named... Wait, why, is, why is he wearing number 11? I was going to say Micah Parsons, who wears 11. There's, there's two 11s on the field. That's why Jordan Love's getting caught up. He's wide open, and he drops the ball. You've got to be kidding me, Jaden Reed. Tell me the Cowboys aren't going to knock us off for the second straight year. 2.38 to go. We do still have three timeouts, but Pollard was the, um, the guy that killed us last year. And hopefully he's not the guy to do it again this season. Gets another handoff, but we stuff him behind the marker. Here we go, third and three. Biggest down of this game. We still have two timeouts to go. Can we get just one more stop? Tony Pollard. What can I do? We can't stop Tony Pollard. If we can't stop Tony Pollard, we're not going to stop anybody. You know what I'm saying? Ah, uh, disappointing, man. The cow Can we not play the Cowboys, please? <laughs> and they took the Packers, beating them in real life, of course, personal. Two years later, they're still holding a... 
Still holding a grudge. Glitching out once again, quarter end. Jordan Love, 265, two tuds. Honestly, played Doc to a similar level, but I mean, at the end of the day, we just... God. At the end of the day, we just can't stop Tony Pollard when it matters most. Whatever that means. <laughs> but it is one step closer to our main goal of the Super Bowl. Divisional. Divisional. This time, we at least made the NFC Conference Championship, so it is a step in the right direction. Jordan Love. Dak, Dak wins MVP too. I'm getting real sick of you, Dak. I ain't gonna lie. Jordan Love number four. Johnny Wilson number three for Defensive Rookie of the Year. We should get some Debbies though. We had some monster statistics this year as well. And we get an X Factor Jordan Love and Christian Watson. That is awesome to freaking see. Jimmy Week sadly only a start of element, but these three guys being an X Factor now is big time. We definitely got to give Christian Watson whatever money he demands. I will be there. No doubt Johnny Newton up to a superstar development. You love to see that. Do not think we got anybody else, though. Hugh Terry remains at normal, sadly. And you, <laughs> you're not going to be here next year. Once again, though, we lose to the eventual Super Bowl winners. Cowboys 33-21 on Kansas City. Damone Clark is your Super Bowl MVP. If we want to be the best, we got to beat the best. And nobody's ever said that about the Cowboys until now. <laughs> now, we got about 50 mil to spend, but there are some big names, including Christian Watson, who is actually only an 84, but he's playing like a 99. <laughs> and honestly, I'm going to do very player friendly. He has zero interest, but we honestly need... Are you kidding me? He will get tagged. Don't even worry about it. Lucas Van Ness, fifth year. Let's accept that. Eric Stokes, we're going to let go. Same could be said for Darnell Savage. But Zach Martin, on the other hand, is still a 94 overall. Has incredible interest in rejoining, so we'll give him a new deal. Romeo Dobbs, I think I'm going to let go to, and hopefully Dontavian Wicks can step up. And for Walker, Grover Stewart, Devontae White, John Runyon, they're all going to go to. Which leaves us with... Hold up. Let's go ahead and get Unlocker in the player personnel staff tree and put it on Christian Watson. That now gives us another opportunity to re-sign him. I definitely want him back. You guys have seen how good he has been for us. We gave him a ton of money, but honestly, I think it's worth it. Don't worry about his overall. You guys have seen the numbers he's been putting up. Whoa. <laughs> um, Adonis Allen is a superstar X Factor. You're joking. Bro, I was just looking over the team to see what we need to do in free agency or the draft, and he just caught my freaking eye. By the way, Aaron Jones regressed five ratings. That's kind of pain. And we would save about four mil for cutting Devondre Campbell, so I am going to let him go. We also save money here, and I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. He genuinely costed us that game against the Cowboys, because instead of going for it on fourth down, we could have tied up the game. <laughs> huh? I've, <laughs> I've never seen Micah Parsons hit free agency in my life. Justin Matabike is here as well. Holy crap, what the heck? He actually has interest too. Oh, we have no money, dude. Oh my god. It probably wouldn't be wise to spend all our cap space on Micah Parsons, but I gotta try. We'd free about 15 mil by restructuring Jordan Love. I'm just gonna do it. Save about 6 mil for Rashawn Gary. This is gonna be an all-in freaking year. As we now have the available cap to get ourselves Micah Parsons, let's throw him a deal and see where we land. And we are currently one of his top two favorites. And even after that, we still have 10 mil. So I'm just gonna opt for depth with Jack Jones and Ifia to Melifonwu, and let's go ahead and eval these offers. Micah Parsons, are you a Packer? No way. No way I just did all that for him to reject us, dude. As he now goes to LA, and that is extremely frustrating. But um, now that we have all this money, um, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Are you picking up what I am putting down? Where are you at, Devontae Adams? Whose cap hit is still 44.1 mil. However, if we do ask for offers, they still want so many picks for a 33-year-old day. How about I give you Don Dontavion Wicks, <laughs> Cedric Van Praan. Ooh, hold up. They need quarterback. Remember, the CPU drafted us. Tim Candidate. How about him? Any any thoughts, Raiders? Okay. Our first round pick. Ooh. Okay, what if we get rid of this one? Let's do a future one. And maybe we'll try like a 2028 20, third. So two years into the future there. 2028 mm. second. Ugh. And ladies and gentlemen, it has been accepted. Dontavion Wicks. Tim Candidate, Aaron Jones, this year's first rounder, next year's third, and the future second round pick in 2028. But we get ourselves back a Packers legend, Devontae Adams. Because we are truly so, so close to winning that Lombardi, and I think a player of his caliber can take us over that hump. As he is now back in Green Bay colors, I know he's 33, I know I gave up a lot, but I think he's truly going to be the X Factor for us.
And you know what? One last addition here in Jawan Bentley. I'm gonna put another private workout on free safety Stefan Davis. We're gonna do linebacker Kyrie Hyde out of OK State. And last but not least, center Enrique Campanaro here out of Wazoo. But as you know, no first round pick for us this year. And OK, I'm gonna try to do everything I can to get Stefan Davis. By the way, that center I just did is ridiculous. Look at the ratings, elite just about everywhere, but the combine especially, he was number one in every single category. Now, Stefan Davis and Joe Hagans here around one to two left and are both going in the 40s. As we are at the beginning of round two, I'm going to go to my pick. If one of them are there, I will be happy. Stefan Davis is still here. Is Hagans though? He is too. And here's the dilemma. Currently, Robinson would be our starting right end, which is not great. He's only a 69 overall, but at free safety, we did sign Melifonu, who's going to be a 75. So with this pick, I think I'm actually going to opt to go for Joe Hagans, the left end, because I just think it's a bigger position to need. I think Melifonu can hold his own. We also have other cornerbacks to potentially move back to free safety if we need depth there too. Joe Hagans looks like the best available option here on the D-line. Ron wanted two talent. We know that for sure as well. So hopefully... He's hidden dev. He ends up only being normal, but I trust. I trust he's going to be decent. Now, here's the thing. If Ste Okay, I was going to say, if he stays for a little bit longer, I'm going to trade up for him, but there he goes. Now, at the end of round three, please tell me our guy is still there. He's gone too. God. End of round three, I'm just going to go free safety Mark Floyd and hope for the best. Another normal dev. I am in round seven. Owen McLeod looks like a generational kicker. I'm just saying 99 kick power. What an upgrade on Anders freaking Carlson. So not the most eventful draft for sure as we didn't have our first, but Hagen's ended up being a 74 the rest of the draft. Honestly, not too bad. And here's Cabrera, who we saw earlier. He's the number one guy in the class, went number one, 82 overall. What I want to see, though, is the free safety in the center that we missed out on. Here's Stefan Davis. He ends up being a 75 overall and only normal as well. So either way. Now, where is that center? Because, oh, man, I wanted him. Enrique Cabanaro goes 26. So just three picks before us ends up being a 73 overall. Hidden dev. This guy actually looked ridiculous. Was he crazy? Only a star, so you know what? I ain't too mad about it. Now here in 2026, the team looks a little bit different. Aaron Jones is gone, but we added back Devontae freaking Adams. And last year, I believe we were top 10 defensively, so hopefully we just remain put, if not improve. And let's see how much our GOAT Owen McLeod can improve this team. Um, I mean... <laughs> We're, we're one in we're one in five are we being serious are they at least close 20 to 34 20 to 24 lost by a touchdown lost by about 11 one possession game i mean they're close but I, what what are we doing do i even have money this year okay we actually have 95 mil that is way more than i thought <laughs> as tay has no resign interest cam curl lock him up everybody else i'm honestly gonna wait till the end of the year but like same time what what in the world bro falcons in week eight okay Shout out to Jordan Love for that, but I need a legacy second half from you, my guy. And look at the AFC side on defense, you absolute rat. Can somebody just explain to me why we are... Oh my... Oh, huh? What? This is just embarrassing. We've been so good this video. We beat the Lions there, but still three and six. Is there a world we make it? It's very slim. As we might have a top pick in this year's draft, so let's get an absolute stud. These two guys, I'm putting two of them on them. And the third one's going on tight end Levi Phillips. Dude, only in Madden you add in Devontae Adams after making the NFC Conference Championship and get worse. Only in Madden. And we, we go... <laughs> I didn't change any playbooks or anything. This is, Everything's the same. And we go 6-11 and 11 with an 88 overall squad. I am dumbfounded. Fourth still, though, in offensive yards with the defense just terrible. The deep... Wow. Okay, then. Jordan Love put up very eerily similar stats to last season. To be honest with you, he was not the problem at all. Adonis Elliott was decent in his first year as a starter. 10 tuds, 3.9 to carry, 950. And, of course, it was actually Jaden Reed who leads the way this season. 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. Tay was great, though. 11 touchdowns, 1,100 yards, 3,000-yard receivers, which is pretty awesome to see um everybody did well even musgrave contributed yeah the offense actually wasn't the problem it was this side of the ball that was an absolute uh, just a disaster 136 tackles for quay walker there 19 tfls for lucas van ness 18 for johnny newton 14 for johnny wilson rashawn gary has been so disappointing this video only five sacks i'm going to change up the schemes in the playbooks next year because this is just this is clearly not going to go anywhere <laughs> no, three picks three picks even Owen McLeod went 11 for 15 for field goals. We might be finished. I guess Devontae Wyatt and Darno Savage were our entire team as Jordan Love ends up being number two for MVP there. If we just made the playoffs, he arguably probably would have won. Defensive player of the year goes to Micah Parsons. Aaron Donald is still there too. This is really all his fault. Shout out Jordan Love though. And for development traits, we may get one for Jane Reed and we do. He goes up to superstar. This offense is perfectly fine. Jordan Love is still doing his thing. We just need Adonis Elliott to keep growing and we will be... 
I mean, we're already there. I was going to say we're going to be elite in no time. It's this side of the ball, though, where we need, we need some upgrades. We need some help. Johnny Newman goes up to X Factor. That is definitely a big one for us. The only one there, and honestly, the only one that's probably deserved. Owen McLeod is okay. <laughs> As the Vikings end up making it all the way, but they lose 21-24 to the Bengals. Shout out to Joe Shiesty. Our downfall truly needs to be studied because honestly, what did I just witness? But all right, we got some people to resign. Jair is going to be the first one. Jerzon Newton's fifth year will be accepted. And this is now where we are in trouble. Jaden Reed, Devontae Adams, Luke Musgrave, Elton Jenkins, Jack Jones, Zach Martin, a lot of them have no interest. Tay wants a two-year deal for so much money. I mean, I traded up so much to get him. I almost have to. Was it a mistake making that a trade for him? Probably. I went with the heartstrings, though, with Green Bay. I wanted to bring him back and win a ring, but now we are in... We're in a deep hole. Zach Martin, as long as he wants to rejoin us, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say no, right? Let's do unlocker again, but this time for Tay. And I'm gonna give him pretty much a very friendly player deal, Devonte. I really need you more than ever. Because we pretty much got nothing left. I can't even re-sign Elton Jenkins. Gonna have to let everybody here go. And our current wide receiver three is now Jake freaking Bobo. <laughs> We have just about under 20 mil though. AJ Brown, Tyreek Hill are here. Of course, we're not going to be able to afford them. Not even close to it. But honestly, a guy like Elijah Moore will do just fine. Okay, first players through the door. It's going to be Kate Otten. Doesn't look like we're going to get Elijah Moore though. So I just put in a cheap deal for John Mechie. We have Blake Cashman here as well because we need more linebacker depth. He's being quite stingy. Really? We did get John Mechie though. And by the looks of our available salary cap, I can tell you we got Blake Cashman too. And okay, this is gonna be a massive draft for us to bring us back to contention, hopefully. These two guys look otherworldly. Honestly, I wanna know their talent. And we also need a center now. Carl Jackson out of the U is our third and final one. Now time for the 2027 draft. We do have pick number three. Wow. What an absolute bipolar ride we have been put on and these two guys are both top five. And I checked them both out. They're both great. To be honest with you, whichever one falls to me, I'm more than happy to take oh they went with a quarterback at number one the commanders there goes peter meeks but the wide receiver that was number one on the big board um he's still there in the name of oscar grant he is 23 a playmaker here out of georgia a little bit older he doesn't look anything special though we don't have him really scouted at all so i can't say too much it would definitely be a gamble and I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to play it safe. Take the top five guy that we know is a for sure thing. And he's going to help out our 32nd ranked defense as of last year. Our offense was fine. That defense, though, needs some help. Hidden development for David Fairley. Welcome to the team. Hopefully, he can bring us back to what we once were. And I picked three round two here. I'm going to go Dante Mullins. We do not have our third round pick. So this is likely our final one. He's a left guard. We're probably going to move him out to center out of UW is hidden development so that is a great sight to see honestly and i'm gonna let the cpu do the rest because they're better than me as our guy david fairly ends up being an 81 overall mullins actually ends up being a 78 and look at what the cpu did with us <laughs> jose clement 76 and a 72 wide receiver are you kidding me clement unfortunately only normal but i mean that that's awesome this seemed to be an awesome class though as meeks was also a 70 or an 81 overall where is the receiver he ended up following all the way to 12, but was an 80. There was definitely a world we went him. He ends up being hidden. From number one on the big board all the way to number 12, though. Mm. <laughs> okay, that, that kind of stings. That really does. Peter Meeks, who of course went one before, same rating, also hidden. And either or, I was going to go with whichever one fell to me at number three. <laughs> He's also a superstar X Factor. David Fairley, please do not let me down. As those two guys are the joint highest rated players in the class, they're not bad at all. As there was a 78 rated corner in round five, pick 21 going to the Saints there, unreal. The Saints also got a 76 overall in the fourth round. What were they cooking? Oh my God, I'm gonna check out their class real quick. 78, 78, 76, 76, 73. And actually in round one, they went with that tight end that I was interested in a little bit. He went 21 though, a little bit too rich for me. Oh my god, Our, everybody I was interested in is crazy. Um, the only one we don't know is, of course, the guy we chose, David Fairley. I'm praying for the best. As we do have enough staff points to go ahead and reveal him here, David Fairley, please at least be a superstar or else it's not going to be a good pick. If he's a superstar X Factor, then it's all fine. It's all rainbows and sunshine, <laughs> I guess. David Fairley ends up being an X Factor. What? a freaking draft class oh my god okay i changed to a 4-3 now i gotta move everything around now though and before we head back in i'm gonna make a blockbuster trade here with the new york jets getting nick Irwin. we do need another linebacker low key and then our long lost friend there and jonathan buchanan who is now up to a superstar dev i'm gonna accept this trade for two seconds and a third we just need depth i'm going all in now we need to win that lombardi and tell you what we do have number three projected because that's what we finished last season what could i get for that javante patrick paul kenny moore who's the next factor 
That would not be bad. Jake Ferguson, Patrick Queen, 87 overall linebacker, Charvarius Ward. There are definitely some heavy hitters over here. I think this is the one I like the most, though. Tyson Campbell, who's still just 27, still has room to grow, already in 87. I feel like we do need somebody alongside Jair. It's been locking this entire video. Their world, we can get like a third round pick with it, though. Look, they were trying to do a seventh with Tyson Campbell for the first. We did a third. I arguably should even um, ask for a higher pick, second or first. But you know what? Tyson Campbell, welcome to this team. We are now all in as this offense looks great Mullins is now at center it wasn't a problem last year Jordan Love keeps playing at an MVP level defensively now though 4-3 fairly in Newton will be starting a defensive tackle together Rashawn Gary and Lucas Van Ness off the edges safety now with Jonathan Buchanan and Cam Curl look very nice and at cornerback we added in Tyson Campbell an 87 overall alongside Jair linebacker group looks pretty decent too this is arguably the best squad we've had so far can we get back to what we once were? And okay, this time around, we're only three and four at midseason, but we are top of the North, which is struggling. 58 mil in the bank, Jair's here. Drashawn Gary, Lucas Van Ness, Sua Mataia, a few of the rookies that we drafted in just year one. Rashawn Gary, obviously being the big name, we are gonna offer him a big deal here and he signs for another two, but I think that's the only one we do right now. And in 2027, we end up back in the playoffs, top of the North, where we belong with another 11 and six record. And offensively, once again, we were top three in the league that has never been a problem for us and the defense went up considerably 20 spots as Jordan Love once again was phenomenal 4,400 yards 33 touchdowns eight interceptions he has been consistently brilliant and check out Adonis Elliott in year three 15 touchdowns 4.3 a carry 1,200 yards awesome year and good god Devontae Adams I didn't even see this oh my god it is well worth more than worth giving him that contract now 1,800 yards 15 touchdowns. John Mechie was great with five touchdowns, 950 k on. Christian Watson, though, man, it feels like only one person every year can really boom, except for last year when we were cra or trash. Damn, we gave him a big deal, too, and he really didn't do much this year. Quay Walker and Blake Cashman over triple digit uh, tackles there. Jordan Newton, 18 TFLs, 17 for Gary, 15 for Lucas Van Ness, 10 for Cashman, but once again, the sack numbers just aren't too crazy. Gary leads the way only with eight and a half, though. Newton and Van Ness with seven. Fairly the rookie with six and a half interceptions three for Jair two for Quay Cam and Buchanan quite an on season for sure but I'm just glad we're back in the postseason because there's always a chance once you make it here as the Giants are the one seed we actually finished as the two seed though Panthers number seven and the Jags who we got Tyson Campbell from finished as the one. Ooh, hold up there's no Cowboys as well remember that's the only team that has beaten us in the playoffs but of course Micah Parsons is on the Rams now the Cowboys not making it could be huge though I'm just gonna advance this one we're not gonna hop in for the wild card round against the nine and eight Panthers I I mean surely as we put up 50 points and here we go with Micah Parsons again as he actually wins the NFC defensive player of the week but he's playing the offensive player of the week Jordan Love four passing touchdowns one rushing touchdowns five in total 260 yards can you get the better of him this time around as it will be another game at Lambeau Field uh, although we finished with the same record as the Rams 11 and 6 but we beat him 24 to 3 and here we go with the number one seeded New York Giants I'm gonna hop into this one but before we do that Rashawn Gary three sacks shout out to you but this time around we're gonna be playing the offensive player of the week in JJ McCarthy. Giants are an 86 overall squad. They still have their core in Sexy Dexy, Saquon, Xavier McKinney. We are an 88 though, but we're traveling to MetLife in East Rutherford. Home of the 2026 World Cup final, of course. I will be going to a few World Cup games, no doubt. But we find ourselves back in the NFC Conference Championship. Can we punch our first ticket to the Super Bowl of the video? 3-0 there in the first quarter. We go up 10 points here. Our defense is clamping JJ McCarthy and the Giants. It is 13-0. 16-0 fourth quarter do we, do we even have to hop in <laughs> the Giants get a consolation touchdown there too at the end of the fourth quarter but too little too late we're going to the Super Bowl there a dominant performance from our defense most definitely bro they legit had no points until like four minutes left in the fourth quarter JJ McCarthy two interceptions one pick he is not that guy as we have officially punched our first ticket to the Super Bowl and it's going to be against the nine and eight Colts interesting as Mahomes wins another MVP Jordan Love's been hovering around two to five this entire video funnily enough the only time he finished two was when we were six and eleven shout out to Tay though he has been a game changer for sure not gonna lie though last year definitely had me scared I thought we made a huge mistake trading for him and then we were forced to give him a big contract as well but this year he definitely showed up with 1800 freaking yards all four of these guys are already x-factor so nobody can really get upgraded on the offense defensively though did take a huge step up this season as Buchanan and goes up to superstar x-factor you love to see it the man that we missed out on but 
All roads to lead to home. Now, I am interested in this Colts roster here now in 2027, 2028. Of course, Taylor is still here. Nelson, Kenny Moore, who I was interested in when we were trading that first round pick. Braden Smith is there. Oh, I see him. Anthony Richardson is still around at an 85 overall at 25 years old now. They've done some good drafting with Floyd McLean, Morgan Allen. They're a superstar cornerback. DeForest Buckner is still there. Same with Quiddy Pay, Julian Blackman. <laughs> And look at this, Romeo Dobbs, who to be fair, didn't snake us or anything like that. We simply just didn't re-sign him back, but it's funny to see him on the other side now. Here we go though, our first Super Bowl appearance, first quarter, the Colts are actually gonna end up going up 7-0 there as we are driving down and get a touchdown with the very first play in the second quarter. Shout out to C. Watson. That boy has really been like that this whole video. Second quarter though, halfway gone now, no points scored yet. And it's going to stay that way. As the halftime show featuring Dua Lipa is now finished, I was barking on the sidelines. 14 all here going into the fourth quarter. We do have ball with the third and one. Do not get it, but end up going for it on fourth down. Christian Watson with a big reception as we are still driving down. Get a touchdown to John Meshi, the new addition in the offseason. It seems like all the additions and the draft picks we've made are paying dividends here in year number four or five now, I believe. Second and five, 10 yard penalty for Nicholas Wall there, but they get a huge conversion with just about under five minutes to go here. A Rich steps back to pass again, finds an open man. And he gets an easy first down for the Colts. Giving them a first and goal from the four now. It's going to be hard to stop that man. I was alluding to Jonathan Taylor, but Anthony Richardson can, of course, do it himself. He's built like an absolute tank, gets into the end zone. Tie ball game here. And with just over four minutes to go, can our offense, led by Jordan Love, find our way down the field? And immediately finds our guy. 22 there. I'm not too sure who that is. Is that the running back? Was that a wheel route? I'm not gonna lie. I think that's our backup running back. I think his name is Edwards or something like that. Four minutes though to go. We're gonna hand the ball off to him again as our X Factor has not uh, been in the game as well. Yeah, this guy, D. Edwards. Hey, shout out to him though for that huge gain. As the clock is ticking, we are in field goal range now, so definitely no rush. If anything, let's waste as much clock as we can as the new tight end addition, K. Dalton, gets us the first down. Jordan Love with two picks this game. But another conversion. Jordan Love's going to take this one, which it scared me a little bit. Why? <laughs> Under 245 to go this time. Jordan Love going to pass the ball. Christian Watson out on the right. Hank. Hank. What? Gives us, though, a first and goal on the seven. We are looking threatening as ever. Just two minutes and 12 seconds to go now. We're going to be handing it off to our drafted superstar X-Factor running back Adonis Elliott. We picked in the third round, remember? We now have to rely on this defense that was ranked 32nd just last year, but in just one off season, we managed to put it into the top half now. However, they get a huge gain there and at first down. And defense, I need you out more than ever. David Fairley, the rookie, I need you to make some plays. But we pick off Anthony Richardson there. I believe that is going to be Tyson Campbell. Another one of these massive additions that we made in the offseason. I swear they were everywhere in this Super Bowl. And just overall this season as a whole, they made their stamp. We saw Kate Otten with a big first down too. And now if we could just get one first down here, we would pretty much clinch this game. And Adonis Allen or Adonis Elliott does that. This game is wraps. We won a Super Bowl, baby. We just passed the ball on third down, but we clinched the game <laughs> with the first down. That was a little scary, but we put it in one of our most trusted players of this entire video in Christian Watson. And Jordan Love is going to end this game off in victory formation with his superstar X-Factor ability on. The Lombardi is back to Lambeau Field. And the job is now finished as Jordan Love lifts the Lombardi here, but we're going to go one more year. Let's see if we can go back to back. But I would just like to point out that Jerzon knew in the very first pick of this video had three sacks in the Super Bowl. And I mean, if you ask me, I think that's worthy of a Super Bowl MVP as he does take it home. The uh, defensive tackle out of Illinois in the 2024 NFL Draft ends up getting a Super Bowl MVP just four years down the line. But alrighty, we'll go one more year. Let's go ahead and speed run through this all. Jair told me he wants to run it back. Ain't even gonna lie, we're kind of screwed with money here because of all the restructurings that I did earlier. Maybe I should have just ended the video, but F it. As we're gonna bring in Tutu Atwell, Taylor Decker, and Cam Mitchell. Now we do have a huge vacant spot at our right guard position, but that is going to be filled with Lynn Claiborne here out of Clemson. Ends up being hidden dev, a day one starter. Let's see if we can win number two. And this is going to be the squad to try and go back to back. Claiborne ends up being a 73, but Jordan loves up to a 94. And now defensively, we did lose some key pieces, but hopefully Hagens can step up. But at the end of the day, we have five superstar X factors on this side of the ball. It should be good enough. As we get teen is here and we end up. 
Did we just finish with a one seed at 11 and six? I was so confused there. We just finished number one in the NFC with an 11 and six record. Hello. I was genuinely so confused when no team popped up there. <laughs> Jordan Love put up another Jordan Love type season, if I say so myself. And Adonis got a little worse for whatever reason. Less touchdowns, less yards, less uh, carry. Tay is still going crazy at the age of 35, though. 1,328 yards, 12 touchdowns. Tutu Atwell was actually awesome. Way better than Christian Watson. And defensively, Quay Walker, 100. 19 tackles but Jerzon Newton 17 TFLs 12 sacks for the reigning Super Bowl MVP Rashawn Gary with nine and a half their interceptions two for just Quay and Buchanan divisional matchup though we're gonna have ourselves the nine and eight Atlanta Falcons let's see if we can get back to another NFC conference championship here as we do with 31 24 and here is the only team that has beaten me in the playoffs fun fact the nine and eight Cowboys however this time around they aren't too great record wise but they are here for a reason once again all right, the only reason we got to the Super Bowl last year is because the Cowboys didn't make it. They own us. They kind of own us, man. Bro, are you kidding me, man? They only went 9-8, and eight too. That is so annoying. As Lamar is going to end up winning MVP, Jordan Love once again in his usual range. This time around, the Cowboys lose, though, 27-42 to Mahomes and the Chiefs. He's also MVP, of course. Good. I don't like the Cowboys anymore. That is, however, going to be the end of this rebuild. Let's go ahead and recap this team as a whole, and we can't start with nobody else but Jordan Love, who is now up to a 98 overall with plus four morale there at 30 years old. Superstar development, he developed pretty much exactly what we were hoping for. He put up big numbers every single season there, 41 touchdowns, 35, 35, 33, 35, also at over 4,000 yards every single year with minimal interceptions, to be honest with you. He was great. I'm sad we couldn't win him an MVP nor a Super Bowl MVP, but at the end of the day, he brought home that Lombardi. That's all I could have wished for. Adonis Elliott also playing up to a 94 with morale, although he was kind of mid this season for some reason. Shout out to Aaron Jones, though, who was great as well. Christian Watson, on the other hand, developed into an absolute demon, a stud wide receiver one, superstar X Factor, only an 87, but he was a monster. And I believe the final two to three years were the addition of Devontae Adams, so his stats did go down a little bit, but I mean, those first two years were something special with Jordan Love, 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns, 12 touchdowns, 1,700 yards. He was arguably the best wide receiver in the entire league. But of course, we did make that big trade to bring Devontae Adams back to Green Bay, also get him a ring. And even at 36 years of age, he was still putting up unbelievable wide receiver one type numbers, 1,100 yards there in his first year here, 11 touchdowns, but this season, my God. 1800 yards 15 touchdowns even in 2028 still put up great numbers too Devonte adams i'm glad i could get one for you and here as well offensive line i feel like we managed actually quite well the entire video zach tom was a mainstay here we drafted claiborne but we had guys all or zach martin was actually a big part of this team as well as elton jenkins taylor decker looks like he retired but shout out to my boy suo mateia as well as jameel weeks of course up to an 85 now he's actually developed the best out of anybody now defensively we were in a 3-4 for the majority of it actually but the uh the moment i saw us rank 32nd was the moment i needed to change it we're showing gary um wasn't too crazy to be honest with you although he's a 95 now the defensive tackle pairing with fairly and Jerzon newton though was awesome as johnny newton had some pretty big years for us 17 tfls 12 sacks 18 tfls 18 tfls 13 sacks he was a monster 25 tfls and of course it doesn't even show up here but he won super bowl mvp with a three sack performance lucas van Ness actually was pretty decent this rebuild too so shout out to him jair alexander was of course everything we uh we imagined he would be hugh terry up to an 85 now and tyson campbell Got us over the edge and shout out to Cam Mitchell and the other corners that we had. We had a few. Jonathan Buchanan, the prospect spotlight, who I didn't draft but ended up trading for in the end. He found a way onto this team and he actually developed really, really nicely up to a 92 X Factor. Cam Carl, we signed in just year one up to a 90 superstar overall. He was a mainstay in this entire video as well as Quay Walker. This linebacking group changed a little bit here and there, but he was the guy that led us all. And also shout out to Owen McLeod because right when we got rid of Anders Carlson, we kind of boomed. But that's going to be wraps for this video. Very happy with how it turned out. We had some amazing playoff games we got to see jordan love develop into a bona fide franchise quarterback and also got ourselves that super bowl after that very concerning year but after a good offseason where we were aggressive made some big moves got some draft picks too we were able to get back on our feet and win the whole thing that's gonna be it for me though if you're still listening i appreciate you for watching to this point in the video like comment subscribe do all that good stuff and uh see you